go live, get ready to go live, 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 live. There we go. Greetings, hacksters. If I've been conspicuously absent or not that conspicuously absent lately, it is because I have had a cold that I'm currently getting over and it has been hard to be alive and moving around and talking to people. But, uh, back in the office today and I'm excited because I finally got our Glowforge up and running again. This has been a project of a few weeks because we had a bunch of renovations and we had to move it out of the way and then got to, like, they lost the foam thingies that I stuff in the window so that the ventilation happens properly and I tried the other day to cut some acrylic for our coworker who was leaving to make a little Mario Kart trophy for him and I nearly as fisk myself because the venting option I chose did not work <laughs> and then today I've been running around and finally stuffed the right amount of things in the window so that we can have things in the laser cutter and not die so that's very exciting for me um so this is sock puppet robot vlog part two uh, we're building this guy an Adafruit cricket with circuit playground express uh, and a little robot uh, base chassis uh, into a sock puppet robot that's gonna roll around and the special secret magic thing I haven't told you yet is that on top of the little robot hand is gonna be a pair of snapchat spectacles <laughs> which are going to take photos at various events and at our office and stuff so we have these sweet hackster socks right and uh, I basically a bunch of companies have started giving out socks because they're great they're uh, you know they don't they're not gendered they come in, you know, pretty much one size that pretty much fits all. And uh, then you can just like make a little robot out of it and put some like specs on it. And it can like take pictures at events and things. And ideally it'll be pretty universal. Although I might have to add some clips or whatever in order to get the, the nice sock puppet profile. So, uh, yeah, I've been working on how to make a cardboard frame for this robot because uh, I've talked a lot about sustainability in building robots, and one of the main things I've been working on is recycling those PLA cast-offs um, that you get from 3D printing, and you know, you can be really careful with how you structure things on a piece of, say, plastic to, to save room, but I think it's especially cool if we use something like cardboard that's sort of recycled. And there's a couple ways that I was exploring of doing that. Let's take a look. Um, so first up, here is the prior video that I made about the sock puppet robot, which is the first link in the description of this video. You'll notice that the chassis looks pretty much exactly the same since January 22nd, because I've been working on this frame for about two weeks. Uh, I checked out Pepikura Designer. This is the wrong link. Um, oh no, it's not. Oh no. Pepakura designer. Um, Pepakura is just like the, you know, um, here we go. The uh, sort of a, a Japanese way of saying paper craft and Pepakura, whatever. And uh, it allows you to take 3D models, for example, and turn them into flat patterns for cutting out and gluing together into, uh, you know, objects from paper. I was trying to figure out if uh, I can use this with cardboard, which is what I want to do for robots. I haven't figured that out yet. If you know, let me know. Uh, what disqualified it so far is that it's only for Windows. However, there's a bunch of cool stuff online about how to use it. Uh, secondly, I was on the Glowforge forums, our laser cutters of Glowforge, and check out this amazing design by Tony Bruce. Uh, it's a sweet little fish. Is this a Pokemon? I feel so old. Da, 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 da. She decided to be a fish tronaut. Uh, this child is fantastic. So this was a, a Halloween costume. Look how beautiful that turned out. It's gorgeous. Um, honestly, I like it more. It's just a little orange fish, but you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, someone wrote back saying that there's a plugin called Flattery for SketchUp. That's Google's free sort of um, architecture-focused 3D modeling uh, application. I noticed when I looked at SketchUp that actually, you know, besides having to learn an entire other application for 3D modeling, which 
I find that, honestly, Onshape and Tinkercad have my back on that already, uh, and I also know how to use Fusion. I don't need another one. So, there is a plugin for it, um, but uh, SketchUp has these different tiers of like payment and price depending on whether you want to just use it on the web or use it on a desktop application, and I wasn't quite ready to go down the rabbit hole of um, do I need to have like pay for a license for the desktop application in order to use plugins? I don't know, um, but if you are already a devotee of SketchUp, then that it might be useful for you. Pardon me, I've got it feels like something's in my eye. Ah, it's probably just eyeliner. <laughs> anyway, but flattery. Uh, if you have SketchUp and you like it, a free SketchUp plugin for Paper Crafters. Um, I, the person also, what's this person's name? <laughs> uh, Oh, Tony, duh, Tony Bruce, uh, also said um, that this plugin works about half the time, <laughs> and sometimes it works, but it inverts the panels, which I'm not sure what that means. Um, maybe it prints on the wrong side. And it says you can figure it out with some trial and error. Sorry about the motorcycle noises. Uh, our. Uh, my ventilation system does not do good noise cancelling, unfortunately. Okay, so, flattery. So, options so far. Pepecara, designer, or and that's for Windows only, or flattery, a plugin for SketchUp. Price, wobbly. Uh, <laughs> function, wobbly. So, um, while I was designing this, I decided to do it in on shape because I'm really comfortable sort of dimensioning things in that. You can do it in Inkscape. Sorry about the noise. Uh, Inkscape is fantastic. It's a free uh, application that lets you make vectors, aka, um, I don't know where I was going with that, uh, like pads, like scalable vector images, uh, SVGs, uh, which the Glowforge takes. Yay! And it can also convert from a DXF, which I can easily support or export from Onshape. Look at this. Um, into an SVG file that, that the Glowforge understands. So, I went from designing the thing in here, this, I did not make a 3D model. What I've wanted to do so far was just be able to sort of think through the design uh, and create these sort of patterns for it and then um, move that on to uh, the Glowforge and cut them out. So this has never been a 3D model. This has always just been sort of me doodling around and being like, well, what dimensions would be good? So um, this 70 millimeter wide part here, the arm, there's four of these like arm pieces, um, is designed that way because the Circuit Playground Express on top of the robot is about 50 millimeters wide. And uh, that gives us a little bit of play. And then also, um, this part here is the top of the hand, so it's a kind of like foldy triangle thing. Uh, this is actually a first version that I cut out by hand. Uh, let's take a look at it. So version one. Version one was I made these like maybe 80 um, millimeters across. Yeah, so eight centimeters. And then 160 millimeters or 16 centimeters high. And then it's like 50 at the top here. But, unfortunately, that doesn't quite fit around the Circuit Playground Express because it's a triangle and I can't easily tr calculate triangle to circle in my head. So, uh, but the nice thing is that I do have this long motor with little metal gears and it fits, uh, it, it allows for a pretty long arm. So, um, I redesigned it with four pieces at 70 millimeters at the bottom so that when I fit these together, they should fit really nicely around the Circuit Playground Express. And we'll find that out in a minute. I'm gonna put it together right now. Uh, the other thing that I did um, was add... Doo -doo -doo. So here's the original hand piece. And I found that it was the right length but not quite wide or tall enough uh, compared to my hand. And so I embiggened that, but I also made it a little wider. I also added this tab, which should allow me to attach it to the horn arm of the servo. And then finally, there is a piece 
it's like the bottom of the mouth um like along here and i decided to make that a little bit longer so that's where that is now and now this is a replicable design that i can easily manipulate inside of on shape and print new bits and then this is the back of the hand that i didn't have before one thing that i did when i was uh cutting this out was that i had arranged it all on the bed of the laser cutter so that uh, it kind of lines up with the grain of the cardboard itself so if you look at corrugated cardboard you've got these lines right down the middle and that's because of the corrugations and so I want the fold lines to be aligned with that. Another thing that I've got here is score lines, and I haven't added those to the laser file yet, but I will. I'll add them as dotted lines or something. Uh, and you just have to overlay that on when you're ready to laser cut um, as another uh, layer and have that be cut at like half power or something in order to, to score it. So now I have these four pieces. Let's see if there's any more talking I need to do before I get hands on here. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, well, okay, let's talk really quick through the rest of it. Uh, the other cool thing is that I remembered I have this edge badge from Adafruit, boop, and it has this AI system where you can yell yes or no at it, and uh, using TensorFlow, it'll try and tell which one you said. Yes. Sometimes it's a little hard for it to listen. Yes. Hey. And it even says it back to you. No. No. Hey. So uh, I figured that I would be able to yell at this thing and tell it to take a photo. Once I have an extra servo that's ready to press the button on the spectacles. Oh, whoops. I probably just took like five Snapchats. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Uh, yeah. And so. Yeah, I've been looking through the TensorFlow Light for Edge Badge Quick Start Guide here, and I've ha run into a couple of issues. For example, uh, well, here's the, the Edge Badge. You can find it on Adafruit, product 4400. Um, and there's a bunch of blog posts with other projects that you can put on it, which is pretty cool. Oh, including our video. Haha! <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's featuring our video about the Edge Badge, which you can also find on Hackster's channel. Unfortunately, I have a pretty recent version of the Arduino IDE, and I do not have the Adafruit SAMD package for board, uh, board definitions in my Arduino IDE. When I look for it, it's not there. So I need to figure that out next, but I will. As a side note, there's a new Adafruit badge called the Adafruit Clue, which I'm very excited about, as usual. It's got um, Bluetooth and some other cool stuff. And it's in a microbit form factor. So that's very exciting as well, especially because I've just been uh, playing with this other kit for robots, which is the Kitronic uh, servo light board for microbit. And I'm hoping that it's compatible with that. So, oh boy, so much cool stuff to happen. <sighs> and then finally, finally, uh, my friend Odd who has been on this channel a bunch, has been working on this robot dragon called Widget, and it also uses the uh, Adafruit Cricket robot kit board with Playground Express. So go check that out. It's awesome. He's on, uh, well, it's linked in the description to this video as usual, but odd underscore J with two Ys uh, on Twitter. All right, that's enough talk. Let's get to building, finally, because I don't know how long my throat's gonna hold out, honestly. Um, so I guess the first thing that I will do is super jankily put together these guys with uh, some duct tape. And you know the the cardboard I was using has some some fold crease lines around the edges, but that's fine because what I'm making is basically a really crude arm cylinder uh, to start with. And I do expect to sort of refine this as I go on. I've already been through a couple of iterations. Eek. I'm just going to use duct tape because that's what I've got right here. Scissors. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do actually is open 
uh, up the window with comments so I can see if y'all say anything at me. So if you are hanging out on Facebook or YouTube, now is your chance. Uh, let's chat. <laughs> I'm going to open up the other one. YouTube.com. Dave DeCruz says, hello. Hello, Dave. Okay. Um, let's get back to it. Okay, so now we have two more of these to go. Do -de -do. I would really love to lay these out in a PDF so that they can all easily uh, just sit next together. Unfortunately, a problem I discovered with Inkscape is that if you make a shape out of pads or whatever, or lines or anything, and then you copy it and paste it uh, to duplicate it, it duplicates not as that set of separate lines, but as one filled shape, uh, which is all one piece and will like overlap other pieces with white filler, which is really annoying. Um, and so if I can figure out a better way to handle that, that'd be marvelous. Oh, our friend with the absurdly loud engine is back. Welcome back, guy. I missed you. I did not. It's a lie. I've also got some hot glue on hand with the gun heated up so that we can be ready to go whenever. All right, so that works pretty well. Do do do. Um, just gonna put another piece down. And as for how to attach this, I'm not worrying about that yet. I'm just trying to make an arm. Carol's gotta make an arm. We're gonna make an arm. That's how it goes. I'm gonna sort of adjoin these. Conjoin them. Pre-join them. Ah! What if I sort of fold this back? And then I put them next to each other. And then, yes, now I'll fold the tape over up into the inside and crease it down. Nice. Okay, cool. We have a somewhat wobbly uh, trapezoid extruded square thingy. Okay, chuck that down the middle there. Doo -doo -doo. And we have plenty of space. Of course, it's a little fiddly because um, I might want to make some kind of a frame to attach this onto here. It's not It's not very good. Um, I mean, speaking of which, I'll also have to find a better way to attach this to the robot face. But all that will come later. Uh, for now, I'm decently happy with this. I could always put it diagonally and then have like a space for the plug. I'll figure that out later. First, let's see how we're doing with the mechanism. Hello, my incredibly messy desk. <laughs> We have some bit beam, which is like a, is it bit beam or is it maker beam? There's an interesting, um, Robert Grimm says, yay for duct tape. I agree. Bit beam. The open source building toy. Oh yes, 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 yes. Jason Huggins. So I used to work for Sauce Labs, um, doing tech support and, um, I, I joined partly because of Jason Huggins who made a thing called the Topster Bot, which is like a little Delta robot. <laughs> and he used this stuff called Bitbeam, which is just lasered out um, basswood. You laser out little holes in it. Uh, you can also 3D print it, although that seems pretty inefficient to me. Uh, but check that out. Yeah. You just have these like lasered holes in some square basswood rods. And that's what I... Uh, made as well for a previous robot and they've been sitting around in my room for oh since 2012 yeah so uh that's a thing anyway uh we may end up using that at some point if i want to so the next thing is that i want to score this down the middle and at the fold line again i've aligned this so that the score line down the middle aligns with the lines of the cardboard 
and probably I should use my handy dandy evil mad scientist PCB ruler. Look at that, it's great. Um, in order to make a straight cut. And I'm just gonna cut a part way through this, um, through this cardboard so that I can fold it. Oh boy, gotta hold that down tighter. There we go. Not perfect, but close. Oh. Evil Mad Scientists are a fantastic couple of people. Wendell and Lenore, they make wonderful kits and things for electronics. Okay, that's close enough. And then this one I want to cut along this line. I have to remind myself it's a razor blade. It's not as it doesn't have a thick of a, as thick of a kerf as like a pencil or pen does. So I can just whoop. as I suspected that has a little bit of trouble, but that's good. Okay, cool. And that's you know I sort of eyeballed this, and it came out pretty well. Uh, the whole idea here is that this is gonna fold up anyway. Actually, ah, oh, hmm. Well, what's what's like the midpoint here? I'll adjust this later on, but for now I think I'm going to put a, like a line here. So that I can fold this up and attach the servo horn. Okay, so now I have a little... that works pretty well. Not perfect, but pretty good. And I can always knife off the rest of that. In fact, I think I will. Just for aesthetics. This mat is not a cutting mat, so I'm trying to be a little careful with it. Solid. So now I have the front of the hand, um, and we can move on to the back of the hand. This gets scored in the middle as well. The nice thing about this ruler is that it has very close together uh, centimeter tick marks, and also they're on both sides of the ruler, which makes it really easy to make sure that you're perpendicularly aligned with the base here, which is what I want. So aligned with the point at the top and the base at the bottom. Make sure this is all nice. I can also use the cardboard lines as a guide, but I don't. I'm not sure that it was 100% properly rotated for that. Close enough. All right. Eventually, I want the final version to not have to sort of eyeball things as much. But uh, how is this supposed to work? <laughs> but actually. You know, I might not have uh, thought through this properly in my head. It's supposed to sort of... what I need then. Huh. Actually, that's, that's pretty decent. But it's just supposed to be the back of the hand. And then we have our little mouth flappy thing here. Okay, that is potentially too wide. No, there we go. So that's sort of a hand shape. It could even be wider. Oh, and that's kind of working now. Okay. That was the idea. And then, yeah, we have this at the bottom. Okay. Uh, another thing with this, actually, that I forgot is that I want this to be kind of snub-nosed because it doesn't make sense for it to be poking out through the sock at the front. So, shump. <laughs> Easy enough. So, I'm going to make a list of these edits that I'm making as I go. There's a piece of paper that isn't already covered with robots. Uh, so, for this, I did, um, I did cut that off. Um, pardon me. And I cut that off. And did we do anything else? Not really. That's about all the edits we made so far. Okay, cool. That score line aligned with 
this sort of cool all right <clears throat> let's move on now comes the question which I'm not sure about yet which is how to attach all of this to the top of here oh, it kind of looks like a little a little giraffe I wouldn't ma mind making a tiny giraffe robot. That'd be adorable. Okay, so this looks, it looks like the, the, hand, the arm and wrist are too big. I do not like that. They need to be smaller at the top. That's easily doable. Um, and what I will do eventually to make the robot talk is, uh, I noticed that when you're doing sock puppets, you mostly move the top of the hand, not the bottom because that is more expressive somehow. <laughs> so that's why the uh, servo is attached to the top of the hand. And I need to figure out how to properly do this. I might need to, see it needs to fit in here, right? Um, I might end up putting like a block on the inside of this horn uh, or else just sort of wrapping this around. Doing something so that it can sit this way, I guess. This was partly why I wanted to make a mock-up, is because I need to figure out how it's all going to fit together. Instead of figuring all that stuff out first, which is what maybe a more seasoned and precise make would do, I am going the other way around about it. Now what I could do, actually, is have it be sort of nestled inside of the neck. Have a really long horn on it. And, like, cut off this top part. Or I could actually use that to sort of anchor it. Hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's going to end up inside of the wrist there. And then maybe what I should do is make it so that this piece, or pardon, this piece, the bottom of the mouth, is just straight up attached to one of these uh, arm pieces. Okay. That seems pretty easy. So the arm pieces need to be narrower at the top. And if this is, um, I think this is 40 millimeters, it is. So let's make them maybe even like yeah, maybe 35. 35 would be nice. If we make all of the sides 35, then it's going to be very, um, a lot, s a lot smaller and narrower at the top because all four sides are going to come in. So every change we make is going to be multiplied by four. And then I'm also going to make one piece like this. Um, so that I have that bottom of the mouth just connected to a piece, and that'll make one less joint I have to make. Eventually, ideally, of course, I would like to have all of these be just one one part that you score and fold. Uh, however, as yet, that is not possible. Let's see. So, anything else we need to do when we're making our changes here? We've got the we've got the head piece. It's going to be narrower at the top. We've got this connection for the back of the hand. Oh yeah, that needs to be, I think, yeah. Oh, pardon. <laughs> I'm going to cut that off like so. so that it makes a proper bottom or back of the hand and that will all fit together nicely and then the final thing that I will probably want to figure out for the next iteration is how in the world to attach the servo right now I could oh yeah I could just fold it this way if I make a line down here And I can fold it like so, 
that works pretty nicely. And then my servo would have a little bit more room to operate. See how now uh, if I put the servo facing this way, then, uh, oh wait, it needed to be the other way. Oh no, okay, I'm getting myself confused. <laughs> Here we are. Here's the hand. There's the little mount for the servo. And then by folding that over, I just got a sort of double thickness to attach the servo horn. Still not perfect, but I'll keep taking on this. Um, I don't want to take up the rest of your evening. Let's see if we have any comments and then uh, close it out. I'm going to reopen my Hot Puppet Robot window. There we go. So we know what we're talking about and see if anyone's talking. Robert says, would a fishing line slash pulley system be easier? It might. I prefer a direct connection because there's less play in the system. It means that I don't have to worry as much about tension, like if the fishing line stretches or whatever. I don't have to worry about precisely rigging a pulley system. To me, that feels complex, and I'd like to keep it simple because part of the reason I'm using cardboard for this as well, actually, instead of um, laser cut plastic and stuff, part of it is sustainability. And part of it is because I want anyone to be able to make this with relatively little effort. That's why I'm using this platform. Uh, this is a sort of all-in-one robotics platform. This guy. Uh, that makes it really easy to get started and there's a bunch of different programming options. And so I want the physical construction to be the same way. I want it to be pretty simple. A sort of starter robot that then you can embellish however you want. And then I'll be able to put all kinds of different socks on it and whatever and easily rework it. Uh, it's a valid point though. That could be a good way to go. Uh, if, I, if I had, for example, a shorter wire on the servo, uh, I might mount it down here and try to do like a little wire pulley thing. I just think that when I'm carting it, I'm planning to cart this around with me to events and stuff, and that seems a little bit more fragile as well. Uh, Jay says, my evening's free. I'm not sure what that is in response to, but thanks for showing up, and uh, nice job with your dragon. Uh, Robert says, makes sense. Was just thinking about how we made model cars hop in school. That's cool. Uh, I'd love to make a little model car. It sounds fantastic. No one in, on YouTube is talking, so have a great night, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It's great to chat with you. And uh, stay tuned. Another build vlog coming up hopefully much sooner because now we have the laser cutter running. Yeah! All right. Hi, Con.